Yes, we are, Mike. You know, each student in this competition was accompanied by their instructors, and you got to sit down with some of them and talk a little bit about the value of this experience and why they decided to become skilled trade instructors. Yes, I did, and it was touching. See for yourselves. I have a passion for welding, and that has driven me throughout my career, and I feel like I'm at a transition point to where I'm able to give back to the industry, so that's what drives me and, and keeps me going day in, day out as an instructor. So I teach uh, mega trinage, which is a combination of electrical and mechanical, and I feel that this is something that I always wanted to do, to help young people. Getting the young people excited for the trade, showing them it, you know, what you can do by working with their hands. You teach them that you can create something that's worth the value, and the skill is something that nobody can take from you. Once you have that skill, you have that for life, and you're going to be valuable no matter where you go. One way we get the students excited about the trades is um, we work with a lot of the local high schools. We kind of go into the middle schools too and reach out to the students, so we try to get them before they're even aged to go to college. We have different programs where we can uh, the students can actually get college credits while still in high school. I went to college thinking I wanted to be a game warden. I got pushed into the four-year track. And, you know, I was kind of in that age frame where everybody said you need to go to university and to get a degree. I quickly realized that wasn't for me. I'm a hands-on guy. I like creating things with my hands and, and seeing the, the progress with it. I have seen that through the last, what, 10, 12 years of teaching, that students have to do what they want to do and they have to have a passion for it. And it's something that their parents say that they should do, they're not going to do it. And sometimes it's not so much money, it's more like this is what I want to do. I get my hands dirty and I get to create something. I graduated with a bachelor's degree and a love for printmaking, and in particular, Intaglio printmaking, which is etching and engraving on metal plates. So I decided that I would take a course in welding because welding translates from the technical to the ornamental, more so in my belief than any other trade. And there's a lot of creative freedom within welding that I see students express through their ability to weld because I believe that the ability to weld is an art form in and of itself. And it also allows you to make a pretty, well, not pretty, a really decent living for yourself. I show my passion to my students. Every one of them, they see the hair raise my arms when I've given instructions and demos. They see it just come from me naturally. So I let them know that, hey, yeah, the job's tough, but it is rewarding. Look at what you're creating. It's, it's permanently there. You can drive through the city, see the structures that you have worked on or created. That gives you the self-pride, and that self-pride will help motivate you and drive you through your career. There's a lot of students, they might not be made for traditional schools. There's a lot of kids out there, they want to work with their hands, you know, and if you don't give them that opportunity, you're really kind of selling them short on what education is all about. Everybody learns in a different way, so you have to get them excited. Are you wondering how these students were feeling before this round or what they might have done to prepare for this big event? Yes, my inquiring mind wants to know. Well, then it's a good thing our crew had the chance to ask them these questions moments before they were about to compete. I did 200 push-ups at five in the morning. The second I woke up to wake these arms up and get me going, you understand? I pretty much just got up, stretched, started doing some deep breathing. Been watching videos, it's like, like watching the best of the best. Yeah, I'm ready, I'm hyped. Just put my boots to the floor, plant them down, and put all I can into it. Stay calm, focus, and just do it. I don't think we need any further hype than that, do we? <laughs> no. <laughs> Here it is, round two. bevel test. We've weighed these plates. They will bevel for 90 seconds. You win by removing the most material. So gentlemen, start your grinders. Three, two, one, go. It's important, the right tool, the right embraces, the right system, very important. If you've ever run a grinding wheel all day long, you know a whole lot of things about vibrations. Grinders sound pretty good. I think these guys are doing a great job. Angle is important for maximum performance and also for safety with the pressure or grinding wheel. Julian is removing a lot of metal over there. 
Hurting this does not count. To win this contest, you remove the most metal while still imparting a bevel. You only have 90 seconds. You gotta make every one of those seconds count. $10,000 scholarship on the line. I love the sound of a grinder on metal in the morning. Oh, look at that. All right, I think the sister's part quiet. And five, four, three, two, one, shot! Well done, gentlemen. Yeah! I haven't seen the weights yet, but I like the technique I saw. That looked good. application is we had this part pre-made we had a starting weight which we just weighed the grams of the part we had them remove material just like we've been talking through and then we weighed the end weight very common application demonstration we do in the field yeah so we were we were looking for um, technique obviously but the, the the name of the game was uh, how, how much material was removed and the, the entire time everyone was there, you know they're going all the way across the face of the surface beveling back and forth trying to move as much uh, material as they could with the Cubitron 3 uh, depressed center grinding wheel. Yeah, you could tell when, when Mike was kind of uh, talking them through some of the processes, when they kept the wheel on the piece, you know, obviously they were, and they weren't pushing too hard down on the tool, they were removing a lot of material. It was, yep. The Cubitron 3 wheel is doing a lot of work for them, which is really exciting. Yeah, it's, yeah. They, you can see them just like ease up on it as they got a little bit more used to it, which is really cool. Yeah, you know, once, once they drug the drug the uh, grinder backwards and they tried to move forward, they were gouging apart and they weren't comfortable, you know, speeding up the actual traverse rate up. And if they would have just sped up the traverse rate, they would have been able to break that wheel in and it would have been a lot smoother, faster. So I think that was the biggest issue there. In the beginning, a lot of them were really tipped up the, the wheel on its edge and they started to dig and really, really yeah. cut in. So, I mean, that that's, I mean, these, these have a lot of bite to them, these wheels, but I think they got comfortable over time and were able to, to get their technique a little bit better. When you're not using Cubitron 3, you know, if you're not used to it, sometimes you forget, you know, you think you have to work super hard on these other products. You know, you get really tired and you get used to that feeling. But the big difference between this product and that is that you don't have to work as hard. It's doing a lot of that work. So it's, it's a little bit of a mind game and you, yeah. yeah, that, yeah. That's a good point, the muscle memory, because some of these guys may be used to using a harder wheel or something, a competitive product that doesn't cut as fast and they almost have to retrain the way they actually grind with this product because it cuts so much fast. The technology that's behind these wheels, I mean, the precision shaped grain that's in it, that's a lot of the, the reason why that it cuts so fast and it, it, it lasts so long. So that's, it's very new to them. But they picked up on it quick, so it's oh, yeah. cool to see. So yeah, so, so good round, good round, tough round, but good round. Yeah. Grinding reinvented. Yeah, yep. there you go. <laughs> Revolution of grinding. And the nine, Pictured here, went on to round two, the bevel contest, and only six will advance. How you guys feeling? All right, anybody feel really confident that they're advancing? Gateway Tech. <laughs> All right, Gateway Tech. Well, I, I, I admire the confidence. I'm gonna announce six names who are advancing to the welding round. Congratulations to Parker, Nigel, Jonathan, Hunter, Julian and Ben. Well done, gentlemen. Well done. What an amazing challenge. Now it's down to only six competitors. It's hard to believe these competitors are students. They perform and handle the stress like true professionals. They really did. I definitely like beveling a lot more. Um, cutting, you know you can't force it, and you have to just like let the wheel go. And I felt partway through the first round, when it kind of got that angle lined up and it was straight up and down, things really went a lot more smoothly. With beveling, I feel like you have a much clearer idea of where you're at. I couldn't think about how many cuts I did in the first round, I was just going. Second round, I was like, I can clearly see my progress, clearly see where I'm at and what I need to do to adjust. Beveling, man, it just cut it in. It was like kind of jumping out of my hands. So it was kind of harder to control for me. So I just had it like dragging it back flatter. I just felt like it was, it was something hard to get used to at first. But after the end of it, it started to smooth out more. I thought it was actually kind of easier than cutting. Cutting's not my favorite thing to do, but beveling edges, that's something I've kind of learned to put up with. So that wasn't too bad at all. It was strange. Like 
It could have been because you were cutting into a fresh, like, little 90 degree angle, and it just wanted to just eat right through it. But to be honest, at the same time, it probably helped me because it started divot, and when I go over it, it just crushed right into the other part, which would flatten this side. And then when I came back, I hit that little edge that was still there, and it flattened it out. So once I got it where I kind of wanted it, where it was flat on an angle, it was like butter. It was good. I liked it a lot. You know, a lot of community colleges and trade schools, like, you don't always know what kind of materials you're gonna get to work with. And we've got some good stuff at our shop, but it's this palpable feeling when, especially on that first pass, when it's this hard angle, and you know you have to eat it, eat it away as much as possible so that you can open up an actual pass for returning. It was really easy. I mean, it felt like you're basically just pulling it off. It's not so much that I'm meeting the resistance of the metal itself, but rather that I just need to like move the grinder and just let, let the disc everything do what it's gonna do, you know? At first, I was actually put way too much pressure on that sucker. A lot of my grinding discs, you have to bear down and get anything. That sucker, it just eats. Like, it just eats and eats and eats. I just had to literally just kind of let the grinder do the work and give up and just let it go and it went. In the last episode, we talked to 3M application engineer Matt King about 3M Cubitron 3 performance abrasives, specifically about the 3M Cubitron 3 cutoff wheel. And this time, we have him back to talk about the 3M Cubitron 3 depressed center grinding wheel. Welcome, Matt. Glad to have you back with us. Hey, guys. How did you feel about the results of the second round of the competition? I thought it went really well. Um, I think the operators all and the, stu the students in general got very comfortable, more comfortable with the tools and with an audience standing in front of them, of course. Um, it was also an application where uh, each one of them, as a, as a trained welder or a student that's learning the welding trade, they all become very accustomed to beveling, to take using an abrasives to bevel a surface, prepping that surface for a weld. So it went quite well, actually. So now, let's talk about the 3M Cubitron 3 grinding wheels. Yeah, again, you and your fellow 3M application engineer, Tyler Nats, provided safety training and gave students tips before this round. I kind of alluded to this in the last episode about safety and, and it being um, something that we all have to be reminded of. But a couple of the tips that we gave them, and things that we showed them of the tools that they were running, we showed them how the grinding wheel sits below the lip of the guard. And I think explaining why that guard is on there and giving them insights as to not removing that guard and what, how to position that guard in order to get the sparks that come off of the, the surface of the metal to direct in a certain area so they're not spraying their, their fellow operator or fellow competitor. And you know, another big piece of it was just how to approach the workpiece. A grinding wheel is inherently aggressive and when you when you actually come into the workpiece, it can cut into the, the weld or cut into the, the metal rather than removing the, mat the material. So how to position not only going forward, but in their reverse motion. And it was one of the funniest things as we were, as we were watching the competition, we enforced that so much in the beginning of how to run the wheel. Um, and there were one, one or two of the operators did not do what we suggested they would they should do. And it concerned me because I, I, I thought, oh, this guy's probably going to go all the way and win this thing. And, and because they didn't do what we had suggested they do, um, they fell short on time and stock removal during the process. So um, again, just safe operation, proper operation, and how to get the most out of the product is what we talked about in general. So what is unique about the new 3M Cubitron 3 grinding wheels? If you've been in the business as long as I have, it's hard to believe you can make something unique uh, in a portable bonded abrasive product like a depressed center grinding wheel. Um, you go into our customers and you, know, you see these rocks as they call them or these uh, type 27 grinding wheels everywhere you go. It's a very popular product for beveling, for grinding welds and, and so on. Um, the unique thing about ours is, is again, putting some science into it and putting technology into the abrasive mineral and the resin system and how the two of them correlate, uh, not only in the amount of cut you get with lower pressure, but again, going back to some of the things I talked about in the last episode, which is 
reducing the amount of vibration, reducing the amount of kickback from the wheel, making it more comfortable for the operator. And these are all things that were inherently not built into the product, but were a result of that technology going into the product. And I think every one of the operators commented on how easy it was to skid across that surface and lay down a perfect 45 degree bevel uh, in a short amount of time. Well, Matt, thanks for being here. You have so much insight. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Katie. It's been a pleasure, Matt. And if you want to learn more about 3M Cubitron 3, scan the QR code or visit the link in the description to sign up for insider emails. And now we have joining us in studio, 3M's own Jay Shree Set. Hello, Jay Shree. Thanks for taking the time to join us today. We're really excited to hear your perspective. So after having watched these young students compete in this year's Clash of the Grinders, how do you think it will impact them? And how do events like this tie in with the 3M Forward Initiative? I think uh, the students will never forget this experience and they will remember it through their careers and perhaps through their lifetime. You know, events like this are exciting, they are exhilarating, they are electrifying. I mean, sparks are literally and figuratively flying. And these are sparks of their talent and their tenacity, uh, their initiative, their knowledge and the know-how they are gaining because of the exposure and the awareness and the access we provided to the next level of technology. So this is gonna be great for them. And it is great for everybody because we hope that it inspires more students to pursue skilled trades. As you know, there is a shortage of skilled trade workers and this impacts all of us because skilled trades people are critical to ensuring that our world operates smoothly, effectively, efficiently, daily. And that's why it lines up with 3M's initiatives. We have a docu-series that we created called Skilled, which actually celebrates the talent of tradespeople and the trades. And we hope it entertains, but it also inspires the next generation. We need to really have more people go to these high demand, well-paying and much needed jobs. So with Skilled, we want to uh, shift the narrative and lift the stigmas and sort of uh, sift through all the misperceptions. And we found this out through another 3M initiative, which is called State of Science Index. It is research that we do to understand the public perception of science. And we found that the world respects skilled trades people, but more than half of those who were surveyed said that there are negative stigmas associated with these jobs. And that's why initiatives like Skilled, our documentary, are very important. And it also lines up with uh, one of our education initiatives. Uh, skilled jobs are STEM jobs. And 3M is committed to providing 5 million STEM and skilled trade experiences to underserved individuals by 2025. So all in all, with everything that is happening in our world, uh, this is perfectly in line with all of those initiatives, including our program uh, moving forward, 3M Forward. Indeed, the 3M State of Science research is really informative in understanding how the general public feels about science and STEM careers. Tell us more about 3M Forward. Yeah, so 3M Forward, in my mind, is a look ahead into the future, if you will. There are these large, unstoppable trends, mega trends, shaping our world. The world recognizes the changes and challenges this brings, and we know that partly from the 3M State of Science Index results. And then in the 3M world, we know the power of people, ideas, and science to bring about innovative solutions. So 3M Forward essentially is the confluence of these three things, and it puts the spotlight on science-based, scalable, sustainable innovation. And we feel that 3M can navigate through the shifting landscape and really bring about the innovation that the world needs and build a better and brighter future for all. We have a wide ranging product portfolio. We have incredible depth and expertise in R&D, technology and manufacturing. And then we have a really broad global reach with our business and our infrastructure everywhere. So we feel like we can provide by leveraging all of this science at scale, which is what the world needs. And 3M Science can then help uh, improve situation for the planet, workforce, workplace, and even lives of everybody. Jay Shree, you were 3M's first ever chief science advocate. 
Why do you think 3M created this role? Well, um, you know, science is central to everything we do. It is the uh, distinguishing characteristic we have. It connects our business. It is the foundational strength behind our brand. And it is what fuels our innovation. So we care about science and we wanted to understand what the world thought about science. So in, we didn't find a survey that had been done or was global in nature, so we commissioned one. And in late 2017, the first survey was done, 14 countries, 1,000 respondents per countries. And when the results came back, it was really jaw-dropping. Four out of 10 surveyed said if science didn't exist, their lives would be no different. And they were taking the survey on their laptops and mobile phones. <laughs> so you see what the problem is. Science is invisible. Science is underappreciated. Science is taken for granted. And because of what we do and how important science is for us, we also understand that we need a positive public perception of science. So the decision was made to share the results of the survey with the world because we don't have all the answers. We needed to foster a global conversation. So my role was created and then I got to share these results. And I'm glad that we did what we did and built this strong science advocacy platform because then, as we all know, in 2020 came the pandemic and science was in the public discourse and scientists were center stage and people recognized the importance of science, not just for solving healthcare issues, but also for sustainability challenges and for all the sustainable innovation that is needed in the world. And so that's why I'm very excited to be the chief science advocate and advocate for science and careers in STEM and for diversity in STEM fields to drive much needed innovation. Well, we're so happy that you're here as well. And thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Jayshree. Thank you. And here we are again, wrapping up another exciting episode. And looking forward to our next one? Yes, of course. In the next episode, we take a behind the scenes look at the students and what the competition was like off the floor. And Shane Rose, 3M's Robotics and Automation and Segment Marketing Lead will spotlight the education of young people in skilled trades. Plus, Vice President of 3M Gives, Michael Stroik, talks about the mission of 3M Gives and its role in bringing Clash of the Grinders Student Edition into reality. So please join us next time when we get to pull back the curtain and find out more about the competitors who were vying to be crowned Clash of the Grinders champion. And if you want to know more about 3M Cubitron 3 abrasives, scan the QR code or click the link in the description, fill out the form and receive exclusive insider emails. Mm -hmm.